Hello, today we will be folding an origami star dodecahedron designed by Francesco Mancini. This is one of my favorite modular models and it's not very difficult to fold. This model requires 15 square sheets of paper. I recommend using 4 inch squares to complete this model and 4 inch squares will result in a star about this size. I also recommend using copy paper to fold this model mainly because it's relatively thin and it holds the units together very well. Each unit is folded from half a square, so once you've prepared your paper, you'll need to cut each of your 15 squares in half. And once you're done with that, you'll be left with 30 equally sized rectangles, and then you can start folding your first unit. And I'll be using larger paper with color on both sides, but if you're using paper with color on one side and white on the other, start with the white side up. And we're going to start by folding in half horizontally. So take this bottom edge and fold it up to the top edge. Align the corners and the edges. Then make your crease, and then unfold. And now we're going to fold in half vertically. So take this right edge and fold it over to the left edge. Align the corners and the edges, then make your crease, and then unfold. Now we're going to fold the top and bottom edges into a line with the center horizontal crease. So let's start with this bottom edge and we're just going to pull it up like this and align the edge with the crease. So start on the left and work your way over to the right, aligning the entire edge with the crease. Then make your crease. And once you've done that on the bottom, then you want to rotate the paper and do the same exact thing. So you're just going to fold the bottom edge up and align it with that center horizontal crease once again. So just pull it up like this, align the entire edge with the crease, and then make your crease. And once you've done that to both sides, then your model should look like this. Now we're going to focus on the left side of the model here. And what we're going to do is align the center horizontal edge with this top edge here. So we're going to start by pulling up this edge. And once both of the edges are aligned, we're not going to crease all the way. We just want to make a small crease on the left side of the model, just like this, because we're going to use it as a reference crease for later. So once you have a small crease like this, then you can unfold. Then you're going to rotate the paper and do the same exact thing on this left side here. So again, you're simply going to align the center horizontal edge with this top edge here. So just pull the two edges together. And once they're aligned, you're not going to crease all the way. Again, you just want to make a small crease on the left side of the model, just like this, and then you can unfold. And once you've done that to both sides, your model should look like this. Now we're going to rotate the paper, and we're going to focus on the top portion of the model here. And what we're going to do is align this top left corner with this vertical reference crease we just made. So you're just going to pull over the top left corner like this. But as you're doing this, you want to make sure that the new crease you're about to make starts at the center point of this top edge here. So as you're folding over the top left corner, you want to make sure that this edge pivots around that center point. So what I like to do is make a small pinch at the top, right in the center, just like that, and then continue pushing the corner over from the side, just like this, until it reaches that reference crease. And as soon as the corner and the reference crease align, then you can make your crease. And once your model looks like this, then you want to rotate the paper and do the same exact thing on the top portion of the model here. So once again, we're going to fold over this top left corner here and align it with this vertical reference crease here. So we're just going to pull it over like this, once again pivoting it around the center point of the top edge here. Just like this, so we can make our little pinch right in the center of the top edge. Then continue to push the corner over to the right and align the corner with that reference crease. And as soon as they align, you can make your crease and the model should look like this. Now we're going to do something similar with this top right corner here, but this time we're simply just going to fold it over as far as it'll go. You'll see that this top edge will align with this edge here, so we're just going to pull it over like this. So just pull it over as far as it'll go. You'll see that the two edges will align, and then you can make your crease. And then your model should look like this. And once you have this, then you want to rotate the paper and do the same exact thing to the top part of the model here. So once again, we're going to fold this top right corner over to the left as far as it'll go. So we're just going to pull it over the same way we did before. And as soon as both of these edges align, then you can make your crease. And once you've done that to both sides, then you can rotate the model. 
and unfold the four corners that we just folded in. So just unfold them all the way, just like this. Then flatten out the model, and then it should look like this. Now we're going to reverse fold this bottom right corner. And we're going to do that by first separating the two layers that are here. So we're just going to pull up on this top layer, then push up from the bottom of the model because we're going to try to reverse this crease. So just push it in towards the center of the model like this. Then you want to make sure that the crease we just made is a mountain fold. So pinch it from the top. Then continue pushing up from the bottom to reverse that crease. Then push down from the top of the model and flatten everything out. And then you'll see that you've reverse folded this corner here. And once you have that, then you'll notice that there's a little triangular flap sticking out of the center of the model here. And all you want to do is tuck that underneath this layer. So we're just going to pull this layer on top of it so that that little triangular flap is underneath. And once you've done that, the model should look like this. And then you want to rotate the model and do the same exact thing on the bottom right corner once again. And we're going to do that by first separating the layers, then push up from the bottom of the model, just like this, to reverse that crease. Then you want to reinforce the crease we already made by making it a mountain fold. Then continue pushing up from the bottom, and then flatten out the model along existing creases, just like this. Then you'll notice that little triangular flap once again, and you just want to hide that underneath this layer. So we're going to pull this layer out on top, so that triangular flap is now hidden underneath. And once you've done that to both sides, the model should look like this. Now we're going to fold the entire model in half horizontally. So take the top edge and fold it down to the bottom edge. Align the edges just like this. And then as you're doing this, you want to make sure that you crease sharply on the left and the right sides of the model. There's a few extra layers on each side, so you want to make sure that you crease through all of them. Then once you've done that, your model should look like this. Now we're going to align the right side of this bottom edge with this small vertical crease in the center of the model here. And we're going to do that by first picking up the bottom edge and pulling it towards the center, just like this. Then once it's in the center, you want to start at the bottom and work your way up, aligning the edge with the crease. And as soon as the entire edge is aligned, then you can make your crease. And you don't want to crease very sharply because we'll only be using this crease as a reference. So once you have something like this, make a light crease, and then you can unfold. Now we're going to reinforce this small crease in the center of the model by making it a mountain fold. And we're going to do that by first picking up the model, just like this, and then we want to pinch that crease from the top. So just pinch it like that. And once you've made sure the crease is a mountain fold, then you can set the model back down. And now we're going to align that mountain fold with the small reference crease we made before. And what I like to do is start by first pushing both sides of the model together. So just push both sides in towards the center, and you'll notice that the top edge won't be straight anymore. The whole model will start to bend, and then you want to continue pushing this edge over towards that crease. So just push it over like this, and then start at the bottom and work your way up, aligning the edge with the crease. And once the entire edge is aligned, then you can make that crease. Crease sharply because you're creasing through quite a few layers. And once your model looks like this, then you can pull both sides of the model apart and unfold it so that you have the straight edge on top once again. Now we're going to partially unfold the model, and we're going to do that by lifting up this top layer here, and we're going to lay it down flat on the table. And once your model looks like this, then you can turn it over. Now we're going to crimp along these existing creases, and we're going to do that by first folding in half vertically along this existing crease. So we're just going to take this right corner here and fold it over to the left corner. So just fold the entire model in half, align the corners, and then you should have this. And once you have this, then we're going to reinforce the two creases we just made by making them valley folds. So I find that the easiest way to do that is to put your finger on the right side of the model, then push the top left point over, while collapsing along those two creases at the same time. And once you've done that, your model should look something like this. Then to make the model lie flat, all you have to do is pick it up, look at it from the side, and then squeeze the model in half along this crease here, while bringing the top and bottom layers together. So just squeeze the entire model in half like this. It should collapse along existing creases. And then once you have this, this is one completed unit. Now you must fold 29 more.
Once you've completed all 30 units, then you're going to need three to start the assembly. Then, look at one, and you'll notice that it has a small flap like this on each side, and it also has a small pocket, just like this on each side. So then what you want to do is take a second unit, and you're going to insert the second unit's flap inside of the first unit's pocket. So you're just going to take this flap and insert it inside of the pocket, just like this, and you're going to push it in as far as it'll go. And if you've pushed the flap in as far as it goes, you'll be able to see that this edge here on the first unit will align with this crease here on the second unit. So push it in as far as it'll go, just like this. And once you have this, then you're going to want to lock the two units together. So in order to do that, you want to make this crease here on the first unit a mountain fold. So you're going to pinch it from the top, just like this. And then you'll be able to see that you've locked the two units together. So once you have this, then you're going to take a third unit, and you're going to connect it the same exact way. So you're going to take the flap of the third unit, and you're going to insert it into the pocket of the second unit. So we're just going to take this flap and insert it inside of this pocket. So push the flap in all the way. And once again, if you've pushed it in all the way, you'll be able to see that this crease here on the third unit will align with the edge here on the second unit. So once it's pushed in all the way, then you want to reinforce this crease here on the second unit to lock the two units together. So pinch that crease from the top, making it a mountain fold, just like this. And then you'll see that you've locked the second and third units together. And once you have this, then you're going to want to connect the third and first units together. So we're just going to turn the model around, and you'll be able to see that there's one unused flap and one unused pocket. So we're going to insert the flap of the first unit inside of the pocket of the third unit, just like we did before. So we're going to insert the flap in all the way. Now if it doesn't go at first, you might have to flatten out the third unit a bit, and then slide the rest of the flap inside, just like this. And again, once they're completely connected, you'll be able to see that the edge will align with that crease. And then you want to reinforce the mountain fold on the third unit, just like we did before. So you're just going to pinch that from the top. And you can kind of bring all three units together at the same time, just like this. And now you'll see that you've connected three units, and you've made one of the points of the star. So now that you've made a point from these three units, you're going to continue making points the same way. So start by adding on to the ends of each of these three units, and make three new points exactly the same way we did before. And now you can see that the model has a total of four points. And what you want to do from here is continue making points by adding on to these unused units the same way you did before. And as you're doing this, you'll notice that stars like this will begin to form. And as you can see, each star will be made up of five separate points. So the only way to close up the stars is to connect all the five points together. So just continue adding units until the five points are connected. So you just want to continue adding units and points the same way until you've used up all of your units and your model has a total of 30 points and 12 stars. And once you've connected all 30 units, then your star dodecahedron is complete. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial on how to fold an origami star dodecahedron designed by Francesco Mancini. Please comment, rate, subscribe, and thank you for watching.